Namaste, yogis. My name is Marissa Weppner, and I'm a teacher out of Boise, Idaho. I have a studio there, Sage Yoga and Wellness, where I teach most of my classes. And I travel and do retreats, and I'm really excited to present this mini workshop on headstand for you today, Shirshasana A. In my own practice, it was one of the first postures that I committed to figuring out and figuring out with my body and the muscles and the muscle group and then overcoming as well the fear factor in headstands to um, overcome it and then own it, falling quite a bit through the process but never injuring myself thankfully. So I'll teach you exactly how I learned how to do headstand on my own, not with a teacher and not in a classroom but on my own in the middle of the living room, space cleared, nothing around that's going to hurt me as I move into it. Um, so in my first few years of my practice that I took this one on and at that time I'd already started to develop core strength which is necessary for inversions as well as strengthen my shoulders and arms and then opening up through the hamstrings and the legs to get the lift up into the air. So if you're working on your own those are some kind of key things with your own body that you'd probably like to already have um, in your own practice. So we won't go over those today, we're just going to jump straight into the headstand and I'll show you some different stages that you can practice with. Again, just like I learned it myself at home. And you can take them bit by bit, these kramas, these stages, in advance at your own pace. So starting on your hands and knees. The most important thing I find in the headstand is my base of support, how my arms are positioned. With lots of new yogis, what happens for them is their elbows get too wide out, and then you don't have this pillar center of energy. So your arms, it'll look like this when I come down on the ground. I'll interlace my fingers around my elbows, and then that's exactly where I want to keep my elbows. I'll bring my arms out, interlace my fingers, and I'll point with my little finger so the underside of my wrist stays flat and my elbows don't slide out. So the whole time I'm aware of keeping my elbows tucked in to this equilateral triangle that I've just created, that's my column, my pillar of energy that I reach up from as I bring my legs up. So the most important aspect of this is where are your arms? So coming down into your hands and knees, bring your forearms to the ground, interlace your elbows, or interlace your fingers around your elbows, I should say. Make sure that your space around you is clear, just in case you do fall. You don't want to do this against the wall. This is a practice that you're going to do in the middle of the room as well, to learn to do it with your own weight and balance without that um, crutch of the wall behind you that can sometimes give poor alignment as you're learning. So you're in the middle of the room, fingers around your elbows, forearms out, fingers interlace, little fingers pointing, Place your head down right inside of your wrist. So the back of my head here is inside of my wrist. It's touching and on the crown of my head. Tuck your toes under. And for some of you, this will be enough of a stretch and you'll stay right here. If you feel like today you can go further and your legs are open enough, you start to walk yourself up to this position. And you can see here my hips are pretty high. So it's almost like I'm already in a headstand except that my legs are down. So here, if you stay here for about a minute or so holding this through your practice, this is a great spot. You're already starting to get a lot of the benefits of an inversion. So that's stage two. Stage three is to start to bring your knees into your chest one at a time. So you're coming down into a little ball and you hold it right here, knees to chest. And then from this place, as you're ready, you slowly start to lift up into the air. And then coming down, one leg at a time, slowly lowering, knees down, resting in child's pose. You'd like to rest in child's pose for about as long as you were in the air. Match that with a child's pose rest to equalize your energy again. So that was my way of learning headstand through my own practice. Going slowly through those different steps, walking my feet up, bringing one knee into my chest and the other hovering in that little ball, and then eventually lifting my legs up. 
When you're up in the headstands, you want to be mindful that you're pressing your forearms down into the ground and rooting down, that your shoulders, your neck isn't collapsing into your shoulders, but you're continuing to lift and press out, and your shoulders are engaged the whole time, as well as your belly. Your belly's in, your tailbone's tucking, and your inner legs are squeezing towards each other. Toes are spread, and you're pressing out through the balls of your feet. With your headstand, you wouldn't want to incorporate this posture into your practice if you have things such as neck or shoulder injuries that you're watching. Um, so if you know within your own body that you're not quite ready to do a headstand, probably skip this for a while until maybe you get clearance from a doctor or you feel safe within your body. For most of us though that have healthy bodies and then have a yoga practice, the main hurdle is fear that you're afraid that you're going to fall. And so remember in headstand, when you fall, because you will if you learn it this way, you're not falling from a 10-story building. You're just rolling onto the earth. And the body naturally knows how to like tuck and roll, so go with it. Allow your body to fall, and you'll fall with much more ease, where if you like clench up and resist, that's where the injury could happen in the falling. But <laughs> embrace the fall, because it's going to happen. As you're prepping for your headstand, to get a stronger core. Postures that are good for that would be boat pose. Boat pose pulses is one of my favorite postures to get even more strength in the core. And then for the legs, for your hamstrings, longer hamstring muscles can help with seated forward bends or downward dog as well, pedaling out your downward dog. And then for your arms and your shoulders, chaturanga helps, chaturanga push-ups, as well as upward dog and downward dog. Once you feel comfortable with your headstand, doing it in the middle of the room, you can build up the length of time that you're holding it. You can start with about five breaths, working towards a minute, so then maybe having a goal of about three minutes of a hold. Of course, if it feels like you're straining too much or you're using your breath, always lower down slowly. Come into child's pose and rest from there. And make sure to have fun and enjoy the practice because it's not that serious. And if you never get the headstand, it doesn't really matter anyways because there's so many other great asanas that you can enjoy. Good luck.